Hey y'all, it's Rhett from the 100 Acre Wood Highlands. Today it's a cold, cloudy kind of day in Oklahoma and I'm just fixing to go check on the cows to see how the new Scottish Highland cow is fitting in with the rest of the herd. She's supposed to have a calf anytime soon now, so it's important for us to keep an eye on her. But today I want to talk about whether or not Scottish Highland cows are good choices for hobby farmers, homesteaders, and part-time ranchers. Check it out. Well, we got some rain this week and the weather's turned kind of cold here in Oklahoma and we don't get to, you know, tons and tons of snow and a really, really bad weather, but it's times like this that caring for the cows can be a little bit more work and not as much fun as some people make it out to be. And there's a lot of people that want to raise Scottish Highland cows as a part-time side gig. They're not full-time ranchers, they've got maybe 10 or 20 acres and they just want some cows to keep that on the pasture to graze there and to raise for either some beef some uh, lawn mowers or maybe even a little bit of profit and so today I want to talk about you know what are the pros and cons of raising Scottish Highland cattle on a small ranch as a part-time gig I'm not a full-time farmer I'm actually a financial advisor I work in an office at a desk and I spend a lot of my time on a computer or in meetings or working on spreadsheets and, and, and working on crunching numbers and, and a lot of people that raise cattle today are, are kind of like that. They've got a full-time job that they provides all the income for their family and raising cattle provides some of the supplement income that, that they need. And a lot of people that want to get into farming uh, want to raise some of these unique heritage breeds like Scottish Highland cattle or Belted Galways or Texas Longhorns or something other than just commercial, you know, black Angus cows. But are they good for that? You know, how much work is it? Does it cost a lot of money? You know, these are all questions that people should really ask themselves before they jump right in to raising any kind of livestock. So let's talk about some of the good points first. In general, Scottish Highland cattle are pretty easy animals to keep. If you've got the pasture land that's got plenty of grass and maybe some ponds where they can have access to water anytime they need it, it isn't always a constant amount of work that you're having to provide these animals to keep them in good health. You know, that was one of the reasons that really drew me to raising Scottish Highland cattle in the first place, was that they were, can be a little bit low, lower maintenance type of livestock to keep on the farm. Our newest cow is due to have a calf sometime really soon. And we don't know exactly when that's going to be, and so that's part of the reason that I'm coming out here day after day to feed them and check on them to see, you know, when's this baby calf going to come around? And as far as cattle go, Scottish Highland cows are generally pretty good mothers, and they don't always need help when it's time to give birth. And so that was one of the really, really good benefits of raising Scottish Highland cattle on a homestead or hobby farm, is that they typically don't require help when it comes time to calf. Another reason that Scottish Highland cows are good for hobby farmers and homesteaders is that they're a small body frame cow. And, and why that's good is that cows require a certain amount of pasture land to provide them enough grazing grass to keep them well fed throughout the summer and winter time. If you have a smaller cow and you have less amount of land, you could potentially have more cattle than you could a, a larger frame cow. One of the other benefits of having a smaller framed cow is that they can be easier to handle. That leads me to my next point. Scottish Highland cows are generally known to be a more docile breed of cow. They don't always cause a lot of uh, grief, but that doesn't mean that you don't have to be careful around them. These are still big animals that have horns, and when it comes time to feed them and, and handle them, they can definitely be dangerous animals. But because they're a smaller type of cow, it can be a little bit easier to keep them and raise them on your farm. So Scottish Highland cows can be dual purpose, isn't that right, Bear? Dual purpose means that people can milk Scottish Highland cows. Uh, that's not what we do here on the farm, and really I don't know anybody that does, but people have done that in the past for Scottish Highland cows. T typically today, they're raised as beef cows, but they can be dual purpose. 
So if you're a small time, you know, hobby farmer or homesteader and you're wanting a, a breed of cattle that is not only good for beef but can also provide milk for the family, Scottish Highland cows can be a good choice for that. Another major reason that Scottish Highland cows are good for hobby farmers and homesteaders is that they provide excellent quality beef. Scottish Highland cows are very low fat content compared to other breeds of cattle. And so for people that are wanting to raise beef instead of buying it from the supermarket, this can be a really good breed to raise for not only yourself, but your family members and, and potentially for some sales to generate a little bit of profit. And profit is the last reason that people might want to raise Scottish Highland cows. You know, there are certainly farmers out there that have big herds of Scottish Highland cows that provide uh, quite a bit of income for their family. In my case and a lot of other people's cases that raise Scottish Highland cows, they do it as a part-time job. And, and my goal with these cows is, is never been to provide all the income that my family needs. My main goal with raising these cows as far as profit goes is I want to be able to sell enough beef or calves every year to pay for all the needs that these cows have. Whether that's feed through the winter or vet bills or just general stuff that I have to provide around the farm, I want these cows to be self-sufficient as far as profit goes. And if I make a little bit on top of that, that'll be great, but I mainly want to make sure that the ranch is profitable enough to pay for itself. So let's talk about the negative reasons about raising Scottish Highland cows on the farm. Scottish Highland cows are beautiful because of this long shaggy hair and these beautiful long horns, but that doesn't mean that they can't be dangerous, especially when it's time to feed them. And I've talked about that before in some of my videos and I've been whacked several times by horns from some of my cows. And, and that's just one extra step that causes people to need to be cautious when it comes to raising any kind of cow, but especially those kinds of cows that have horns. Penny here, she happens to be my most gentle cow, but she's also the one cow that I know will try to, on purpose, whack me with her horns when she wants some cubes. And so, you know, that's a downside. You know, you've got to have facilities and equipment to be able to handle cattle with horns, and you got to be especially careful. You know, my bull right here, White Walker, is a small frame bull, and he's pretty young. But everybody knows that they should respect a bull and be careful while handling it, but a lot of times people discount cows, and they think, oh, cows aren't dangerous, it's the bulls you got to watch out for. Any kind of cow can be dangerous, and it's especially important to be careful around them when they are eating, because they have these horns. Another downside to raising any breed of cattle or livestock is that there's work involved and there's cost involved. When we get here to the winter months, they're not as self-sufficient as they are in the summer months. Uh, the grass, they still graze on it even though it's mostly dead, but we've got to supplement that food by feeding hay, by feeding cubes, and providing mineral tubs. And all those Scottish Highland cows are, are generally a very healthy breed of cow that doesn't get sick very often. You can certainly still have cows that get sick. Cinnamon was a, a small calf and we bought her. She was just about a, a little bit over a year old. And within the first week of purchasing her, she came down with scours and we had to have a, take her to the vet to get her treated for that. And so just because they're in general a healthy breed of cow, that doesn't mean they can't get sick. And when they get sick, it's work and it costs money. And you've got to have a facility like a corral or a barn system where you can not only catch that cow, but get it safely loaded into a trailer and have a way to haul it to a vet. And that's going to cost you some money. Farms also can require a lot of equipment. If you've got a pasture and you've got a small farm area, before you ever bring cattle home to your farm, you've got to make sure first that it's completely fenced in. Here on the farm, we use barbed wire fences for most of it, and we use field fence or woven wire fence in some areas. And Scottish Highland cows can discover that those horns can be used as a tool to rip right through any fence that they want to go through. So we haven't got to this point yet, but at some point in the future, we could need to add hot wire fence in order to keep these cows. Now that may only ever come into the picture if we're in a situation where we're separating the bull from the rest of the herd or weaning cows off of a calf. As the Scottish Highland bulls gets older, its horns grow more outward and then forward and it will literally use those horns like a forklift to raise up a fence and walk right through it. And so you got to have good fences if you're going to keep your cows. 
But the last thing you want to have happen is have your cow walk out into the road and get hit by a car or get into some other farmer's field and get bred by the wrong kind of cow or, or completely lose it and not know where it goes. You spend a lot of money and time and work on these cows, the last thing you want them to do is get out and get lost. Not only are the fences important, but you might need other equipment around the farm. Here we've got barns where we're able to store all of our hay and, 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 uh, and cubes to keep it dry throughout the winter time. We've got tractors to help us unload the hay. We have to have trailers to go get the hay. Uh, if you're doing it on a larger scale, you might need bigger tractors that have other implements to bale your own hay. We use the ranger to get around and stay safe around these cows. We use it to monitor where they are and to go feed them the protein cubes. And, and it's going to take a lot of other stuff that you may not think of when you first go and want to get Scottish Highland cows. So, Scottish Highland cows, although they're in general easy cows to keep, they cost money to care for, to buy, and to raise, and it is work. But are the pros worth the cons? Does the benefit outweigh the work and the downside with these cows? Do the benefits outweigh all the negatives? Yes, cows are work. Cows cost money. And it is something that's just not easy for every single person in the world to do. But in my opinion, it is totally worth it. I love being outdoors. And I spend a lot of my time indoors working on computers and working in meetings. And don't get me wrong, I love my job but I love being in God's creation. I love being out here with these animals and spending time with them and working with my hands and feeling like I accomplished something on the farm. And, and I know that I've been blessed to have an opportunity to have some land that I can do something with and work on and enjoy. And if, and if you've got that too, or if that's your goal is that you wanna get out of the city and you wanna to move to the country and buy a farm and have a little bit of this life, I think Scottish Island cows are a fantastic, fantastic choice to use. And, and I'm so glad that these are the kind of cows that I raise. Yes, it's not always fun getting out here in the cold and feeding them. Yes, it's work to build some fences and to, and to provide the things that they need. Yes, it costs money, but in my opinion, all of that is worth it. I love being out here and raising these cows. And my hope is that someday I'm gonna be able to provide some good beef for not only myself and my family, but I'm gonna be able to sell some of that beef to other people who want this good, healthy kind of cow. Look at Bear. Did you find a deer leg there, Bear? What you got? Yeah, nom, 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 nom. So these kind of cows, they are definitely not something that I'm gonna to take to the stockyards here in Oklahoma City when it comes time to sale. In the stockyards, the buyers, are looking for large, uniform cows that can fit well into a feedlot. And they want cows that are gonna grow and be able to finish out on grain and provide beef uh, to the market. And you know, the world needs that. And people need that kind of cow. But if I were to take a Scottish Highland cow to the stock yards, I'm probably not gonna get what it's worth. So, you gotta find people that are willing to buy this kind of cow or people that wanna buy beef directly from a local farmer. So when it comes to profit, before you jump into any kind of cows, know that it costs money and know what your market is. Scottish Highland cows are definitely a niche breed of cow, but they can be a wonderful addition to anybody's small hobby farm. So thanks for watching guys. If you haven't already before, subscribe to my channel. You can find me on Facebook by searching 100 Acre Wood Highlands. If you've got questions about Scottish Highland cows, leave me a question or a comment below. I'd love to talk to you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.